it's J Mart again. In this video, I'll be showing you how to perform squats depending on what goal you're trying to accomplish. I'll list the most common reasons why people suggest you should do squats, and I'll provide demonstrations of squat variations that fit each reason. If you get any value out of this video, all that I ask is that you smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell to get updates every time I upload a new video. Hey, I'm Jay Martin and I'm a personal trainer, and today I'm going to talk about squats and squat technique. Squats are commonly referred to as the king of all exercises, and there's a lot of truth to that. But what is the right way to squat? Well, as with all great questions, the answer is always, it depends. So before asking how to squat, you should be asking why you want to squat. And there are many great reasons to do it. Let's just take a moment and think about the number of times throughout the day that we get up from a seated position or lift something reasonably heavy from the floor. For most people, this should be several times throughout the day. And of course, when we do these things, they resemble a squat movement pattern. So I think squats are a functional movement that can benefit us by making us more resilient and stronger for activities of daily living. Furthermore, squats can strengthen the connective tissue of the body and help build resilient joints. They can also help improve flexibility. They can also help strengthen muscle mass and increase muscle mass. When used in a good training program, they can help improve athletic performance. And when done with a moderate level of intensity, squats can reduce the risk of heart disease and improve blood circulation by lowering the heart rate and reducing blood pressure. I'm going to divide these reasons into three broad categories and talk about squat variations appropriate for each category. Let's get started. The first category is stronger joints and better flexibility. If this is your goal, then you should be looking for squat variations that put you at the end range of motion of your joints. You should accumulate more and more time at the end ranges in order to impose the most amount of stress on the connective tissue of your body, such as tendons, ligaments, and the joint capsule itself. Over time, your body will adapt by making the connective tissue thicker and more capable of withstanding the forces applied at the end ranges. By developing more strength at the end range of motion of the joint, you will also improve your flexibility. That's why the classic bodyweight ass to grass squat is one of the best options if this is your goal. It's a full body movement that puts you at the end range of motion of your hips, knees, and ankles. You can add a pause at the bottom of the squat to accumulate more time at the end range as suggested previously. One important note about feet and squats is to try to keep your feet as straight as you can without significant discomfort. A little toe turnout is fine, but having your feet excessively turned out sacrifices too much stability for squat depth. In my opinion, it's better not to squat as low while keeping your feet straighter. Also, distribute the weight on your feet as evenly as you can between the three points of contact on the ground, which are the heel, the pad under the big toe, and the pad under the pinky toe. You can also lift your heels and push your knees past your toes to put a greater load on the connective tissue of the knees, ankles, and toes, or shift your weight back to put a greater load on the hip joint. If you experience knee pain when you push the knees past your toes, it's most likely because your connective tissue is not used to the load you're placing on it. So back off and go very slow. Another option is to do unilateral squats where one leg is working at a time. This way you can focus on the end range of the hip joint at different angles. Again, it's good to add a pause at the bottom of the movement to increase the time under tension at the end range. The second category is building muscle and getting stronger. In order to do that, you need to apply the principle of progressive overload. Simply doing bodyweight squats won't cut it, as your body will quickly adapt, so adding weight is absolutely necessary. We can load the squat with dumbbells, kettlebells, or barbells. We can also change how you hold the weight to emphasize different muscle groups. Holding weight more forward will challenge the quads more, while holding weight more back will challenge the glutes more. Due to the added weight, more care has to be taken to stiffen the abdomen to minimize the spine movement during the squat. Breathe in and brace your core as if someone's about to punch you. Slowly lower to the bottom of the squat and exhale as you push the ground hard with your feet and come back up to an upright position. If no weights are available, then lunges and single leg bodyweight squat variations can be done. For lunges, generally speaking, keep your forward hip externally rotated while the back hip is internally rotated for better stability. For single leg squats, don't be afraid to use a wall or another object to minimize the balance requirements for these exercises. For the purposes of muscle building, keep the rep range of your sets between 6 and 15 reps, while for simply getting stronger, 
lower the rep range to between three and five. In both instances, the exercises should be performed slow and controlled. A pause at the bottom of the squat is a very effective way of developing more strength. The last category is athletic performance and heart health. If this is your goal, then plyometric squat exercises are perfect because they train muscles to exert maximum force in short intervals of time to increase power, which is needed for athletic performance. Pay attention to your landing mechanics while doing plyometrics, as this is vital for both injury prevention and power production. Try to land as softly and quietly as you can using the balls of your feet in order to absorb the force of the ground with your muscles instead of your joints, and prevent your knees from caving towards each other when you land. Plyometrics can also be done at a moderate level of intensity to push the heart to adapt for better blood circulation. If you don't have a specific goal you're working on and want to combine all three categories mentioned into one solid leg workout, here's how to do it. Pick one variation from each category for a total of three exercises and order them as follows. The first exercise should be the hardest one, so it should come from the muscle and strength category. Keep the rep count low in the four to eight rep range and the tempo for the exercise should be slow as well, with four seconds going down and one second coming up. The second exercise should come from the joint strength and flexibility category with a rep range of eight to 12 and a faster tempo, about two seconds going down and one second coming up. And lastly, end the set with a plyometric exercise in the high rep range, anywhere between 15 and 25 reps, with a high tempo, of course, because these are plyometric exercises. Try to keep the rest between exercises short Something like five slow breaths is good, a maximum of 30 seconds, but have a long rest between sets, anywhere between one and a half to three minutes. Repeat the set of three exercises three to five times for a solid leg day workout. Now you'll notice that I didn't include weight loss or fat loss as a good reason to do squats, even though most people will say that squats are a great exercise because they're a full body movement and you will be burning lots of calories when you do them. I think the truth of the matter is that Fat loss is highly independent of what exercise you do. Most of the gains you'll see regarding fat loss are going to come from lifestyle changes you make regarding nutrition, so I don't think doing squats will make a big difference unless your nutrition is under control. If you'd like me to make another detailed video on fat loss, then please leave a comment down below. Well, there you have it guys. That's my recommendation on how to perform squats based on what you're trying to accomplish. In my opinion, squats are a very functional movement and there are many great reasons to I've summarized the reasons into three broad categories, which are to strengthen your joints and improve flexibility, increase muscle mass and strength, and also improve athletic performance and heart health. But fat loss is not one of those reasons. You can do workouts that are focused on one specific goal, or if you don't have one thing you're striving for, you can combine multiple squat variations into one solid leg workout, as mentioned previously. So if you like this video and haven't smashed the like button, then what are you waiting for? Destroy that button, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and lastly, check out my free bodyweight training program called Body Basics through the link in the description. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.